Joel. In Joel chapter 1, we continue our thoughts there. We look at the last group there of of folks that Joel is speaking to here in chapter number 1. he spoke to the elders and the general population to get their attention to say hear this I want you to hear this this is from the Lord I need you to hear this and they were going through devastating times that they had never seen before in their lifetime the locusts coming to eat everything in sight the drought coming to dry up everything so they couldn't grow any crops. They were in an economic disaster in the nation of Judah. And then he spoke to the drunkards. There, and he and he told them As he speaks to the drunkards, he tells them to wake up and weep. The wine is gone. The vineyards are gone. The grapes are gone. The oil is gone. The olive trees are gone. He told the farmers last week we saw to despair and to wail. Their grain was gone, the palms and the pomegranates and the apple trees. The new wine and the oil, the fruits in their seasons were all eaten up. And why were they going through this difficulty? Because they had turned their back on God. And God was sending his punishment to them for that. The day of the Lord. And then finally he addresses the priests there in verses 13 through the end of the chapter. Verse number Joel chapter 1 and verse 13. He says there, gird yourselves and lament. Ye priests, how will ye ministers of the altar come, lie all night in sackcloth? The meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. Sanctify ye a assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord alas for the day for the day of the Lord is at hand and as a destruction from the almighty shall it come is not the meat cut off before our eyes yea joy and gladness from the house of our God the seed is rotten under their clods the Garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of water are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Joel is calling for the priests, the ministers of God's word, to be able to be praying to God at the altar in sackcloth, and in ashes, a time of mourning in the land. 
because of everything that God has allowed to happen in the land. We live in a time as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be in sackcloth and ashes. We need to be on our knees in prayer. To sorrow what is going on in our nation, what is going on in our society. Because what's happening in America, if you ever read anything about Roman history and the great Roman Empire of the days of Christ, We are headed right down that road. America will not have to be conquered from without because it will, be, will have become corrupted from within. Exactly what happened to the Roman Empire. They were able to be conquered because they had become rotten and corrupted in the sinful lifestyle that they lived. And we see that in America today. And if you don't see that in America today, I believe you're blind. And I think there are some people that are blind in our nation. Yes. They can't see what's going on. Because our nation is falling apart. Our families are falling apart because they're being redefined. Political correctness and wokeness and everything else that goes with that crowd is tearing our nation apart at the seams. And where is God in our nation and in our society? Nowhere to be found. It would seem. Revival in our land is needed. In fact, it's desperate. Because not only do we live in a day of physical drought in our land where we lack rain and water, we're suffering a spiritual drought in our land. where the Lord's church is not standing up the way they should. I saw on Fox News the person that was in charge of the Hawaii water control. I don't know if you saw this or not. But he was responsible to release water to be able to fight the wildfires that were going through Lahaina as Lahaina was burning to the ground, and he didn't do it. We need to preserve our water. Our water is precious. Almost sounds like he worshipped water. And used this political wokeness to be able to try to define his position of not releasing that water to all those people. whose lives in the middle of that wildfire depended upon that water to put out that fire. And not only were the people there in Judah in need, the temple was also in need as well. Because of that great drought, because of everything being eaten up by the locusts, the people could not bring their sacrifices to the temple. 
The proper sacrifices could not be made there. There was no meal, no wine, or animals that were available to be able to sacrifice. Joel called upon the priests to lament and to pray. In, in the book of Psalms, in Psalm 134 and verse number 1, Joel called upon all of them to pray. Even those, if you will, of the night shift. Psalm 134 and verse 1. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. The Jews were required to celebrate that day of atonement given to them in the book of Leviticus chapter 16 and verses 29 through 31 there. They were to do so by fasting. It's part of the day of atonement. However, the religious leaders could call for a fast whenever the people faced an emergency. And they needed to humble themselves and to be able to seek the face of God. And was this not such a time to be able to do that? In verse 13 of our text, Joel tells them to gird themselves, to put on sackcloth. It was a time for the people to humble themselves. A time for the people to be praying. The verse of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 to call upon God to be able to revive and heal our land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. pride that we have in our society I believe has seeped into our, our churches I'm not going to humble myself before God our church is great our programs are fantastic they're run so smoothly everything just flows together And yet the altars are empty. No decisions for Christ. We are definitely living in the days of the church of the Laodiceans in Revelation chapter 3. Where God is on the outside, he's knocking on the door. Jesus is not within the congregation. He's outside of the congregation. And churches that have that are social clubs. At least in my opinion. The people were facing desperate times in Judah. The prophet Joel was calling upon them to humble themselves before the almighty God. To seek the face of the Almighty God and to pray that God would work to pray for forgiveness of their sins. To pray for healing in their land. And it's time for us 
to do the same. In verses 15 through 18 of our text, we have the lament of Judah given there by the prophet Joel. And and in verses 19 and 20, the prophet intercedes for the nation. The lament is a vivid description of the sad conditions of the land of Judah. Of the crops and the flocks and the herd of Judah. Because of the day of the Lord that has come to the nation of Judah. And the immediate reference of the attack of the locusts here and the devastating effect of the drought upon the land. Joel describes for us there in verses 15 through 18. But the prophet Joel uses the phrase, the terrible day of the Lord. When the nations of the world will be judged by God. We understand the Bible teaches us that God is the Lord of all creation. And without God's blessings upon the land. Nature cannot produce what is needed to be able to sustain life. Again, we find in the Psalms, in in Psalm 104, in verse number 10. Psalm 104, in verse number 10, down through verse number 18, the Bible says there, of our great God. He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth, the wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he hath planted, where the birds make their nest. As for the stork, the fir tree, Fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. Without God's moving, there's no shelter for anyone. (laughs) Without God's blessing, We would have nothing. That's why when we go to pray in the Lord's Prayer, we pray the phrase, give us this day our daily bread. We should never do that lightly. For God is the one that gives us that daily bread. God is the one that sustains us. In the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 17, As the Apostle Paul is preaching there on Mars Hill in Athens, Greece. To the audience that he has there. And he is there on that Mars Hill. And on that Mars Hill there is the altars to all of the gods that the Greeks serve. And there was an altar there to the unknown God. That is the God the Apostle Paul 
explained, if you will, to those Greeks. And in verse number 25, he says there of our almighty God, Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. We skip down to verse number 28 there in the same chapter. Paul continues to describe our great and mighty God, for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 15 in the last phrase of verse number 5, without me ye can do nothing. Couldn't even get out of bed in the morning without the Lord. Can't take a breath without Almighty God. It's something we should never take for granted as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is through the Lord God that we are here and have anything. Yet yeah, sometimes we think we are something. And the world certainly thinks it's something. But even Satan himself wouldn't have any power without the Almighty God allowing him to have it. As you remember, Lucifer was created by whom? It's created by God. And God only allows him to do what he does because God has a plan and purpose for it all. And we must have faith in God's purpose and plan for it all. The world's a much better place for us if we do. We can get through the storms a lot easier if we do realize that. My time is done, and I appreciate your time and attention tonight.